fairly exciting opening weekend in the Hurling League. Um, we'll run through the, the results quickly. Galway battered Westmead 124-10. Uh, Waterford beat Cork 124-317. Limerick beat Tip 214-18. Uh, 1B, sure they're all the one really now, but uh, basically the other group. Um, Clare 127, Carlow 14, Kilkenny 321, Dublin 18, Wexford 227, Leash 216. Uh, go to 2A then, Antrim 20 points, Wicklow 11, Offaly 26, Meath 121, and Kerry 224, Mayo 13 points. I want to actually start with um, Carlow. Apparently they don't have like uh, Colin Bonner's down an awful lot of players at the moment, but one of the corner forwards. He's um, Aaron Ammond is his name. He's actually the younger brother of Park. Ah, I was thinking when player. you said it, yeah. I was thinking when you said it, yeah. Yeah, I just saw his name on the, on the programme that Buff Egan, um, he put up a picture of the programme for the game against Clare. And I got on to Kevin Regan, KCLR, and he was able to tell me. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, I just thought that was an It's intro. different, isn't it? Any highlights to the weekend for you? Any result that stood out more than anything else? Probably the Waterford result, to be honest with you, because mm. I didn't, I wouldn't have expected that much from them. I knew that they'd want to, they'd want to get going straight away, and Liam Catton had want to get a win. But I thought, given that they were down so many bodies, um, that they could struggle to do so. And the fact that they did so uh, in adversity as well is, um, it's a, it's a fair win, and it looks like they're gonna, it looks like they're gonna be playing a, a brand, a different type of brand. It's a very uh, energetic kind of high octane kind of a brand, mm. and it's. Um, it's uh, it's exciting considering what's happened the last couple of years. It's just been a disaster. So it's a bit, it's been an absolute write off. So, um, hope springs eternal down there. I know it's early, but at least it's something. Yeah, we'll we'll start off with the Limerick and Tip game. So Limerick two fourteen, Tipperary eighteen points, and like Tipperary just had this game one. It was thirteen points to four at half time. I think I have it here, and uh, Tip went fourteen points to to four ahead, and then for the rest of the game they just got. Bullied. I think it was two six to two eight that Limerick scored without reply. Uh, you have the uh, a kind of feeling that this mightn't be a bad thing for Tipperary to lose this game. No, I actually think it's it's a great thing. It's from the position they were in, it's it's not great on the surface. But uh, like when they won the All Ireland in twenty sixteen, we we're all talking about twenty seventeen about how great a panel they are. They coasted through to the league. That was final. always nonsense from people who don't really get it. They just think, all right, they've won underage. They've won the current thing it'll roll on and, and feed itself. Like, it just never works that way. They had an impressive league that year, though. They were, they were, playing, they were playing good stuff. I just don't think... I think it's, it's not a bad thing to get a little, a little kick up the arse at this stage of the year. Not at all. Especially in the, in the, the way they've done it. They were up 10, um, they were up 10 and were, were bullied somewhat. And I'd say Sheedy will go back to that. They were, like, Limerick were just so much more aggressive. It's like the inter introduction of, of William O'Donnell who kind of just turned the game, I would say. Oh, you know, the sub coming in. He's so abrasive and aggressive. He just brings, like, you have when you have Hegarty, Dara Burns and a couple others there, he just brings that bit more physicality to it. But I, I genuinely don't think it's a bad thing at all. They're back training uh, probably about two, two and a half weeks since they came back from holidays. Sometimes uh, things can be a bit false. If they'd gotten a win, just say they'd won. Just say it was a draw match in the second half, yeah. and they'd won by nine points. It's kind of like lads are kind of thinking, "Ah, oh, we're you know we're going all right here, we're going all right." Now it's like we totally ran out of gas. We're not fit enough. We need to get the shoulder back to the wheel again, and it's a nice little eye opener at the perfect time of the year to me. But to me, the reason that it isn't a good thing is because you you'd kind of thought that when Tipperary beat Wexford in those circumstances in the semi final last year. All of a sudden, Tipperary are back to a team that can win a tight game, that can win under duress. And here was a Tipperary team that had itself in a great position. Things got tight towards the end, and you thought, can Tip eke this one out? And it turned out that they couldn't. It's, a, it's, it's sort of ingraining into your team that we lose tight games. And that's the last thing that Tipperary want. If they come up against Limerick in the summer, and Tip, Tip find the form that they had at the end of 2019, and Limerick find their usual form over the last two years, it's going to be a tight game. It's going to come down to the death. Mm. And Tipperary are going to, like, is there going to be a muscle memory of we lose these tight games and Limerick, like, look, we step up. I just think they were goosed. Genuinely, I just think they were goosed. I just don't think the they were like, the think forward line much left. Tip, the forward line from Tip, I know John McGrath got three from play, Jake Morris got three from play. But other than that, uh, you know, the, there's good young players coming through, but they didn't pass this test. And I know it's a tough test. It's one of the toughest tests against the Limerick team that put out a really strong team and brought excellent players off the bench, lads mm. who will start in the summer. Game changers. But yeah. for, for Tipperary, does that knock some of those players? 
Was uh, it setting back at all? No, I don't think so. Even some of the younger fellas wouldn't have had, a lot of them wouldn't have had that much done. Uh, mm. Some of them would be in playing bits of Fitzgibbon and that as well. Like Jake Morris playing Fitzgibbon with Joel as well. You know, he'd be, he'd be busy. Craig Morgan that came on is playing Fitzgibbon with Mary Eye. They're all kind of busy at the moment. It's a busy enough time. Um, I, I don't know if it creeps into the psyche. I don't know if a league game at this stage of the year creeps into the psyche. The fact that they lost the lead they did is not great. But it was um, Limerick were back in the game you know, 10 minutes into the second half, basically. Mm. And it was, yeah, I suppose it was just, it was just the abrasiveness of, of Will O'Donoghue and they were just clinical, taking the two goal chances as well. Like, if, if Jason Ford had got that goal at the end, it kind of would have been, it sounds mad to say it after having been 10 up, it kind of would have been robbery. Oh, it would have been daylight robbery. Because, like, if you look at, and I kind of do out the, the kind of scoreline like this and sort of, I can get a decent sort of map of, of, the, of the scoring and all that. Like, Tipperary were absolutely on top in the first half. But after Paddy Cadell scored a point in the 28th minute, Tipperary scored six more. One, two, three, four. Four frees. So they scored six more. Two more points from play. Yeah. In, in that amount of time, 40-odd minutes. And even in the last maybe 20 minutes, Tipperary had just six shots and Limerick looked like they had about 15, 20. Would I be right in saying something similar happened in the league game last year? Was there a tip fade out in the league game last year, the first game they played in the Gaelic rounds? I, I seem to remember it being tight till about 50 minutes and then Limerick pulled away. That's just in my, in my head anyway. I'm, fair, I'm fairly sure that's accurate as well. I, I, don't, see, I don't see a league game in, you know, infecting their psyche or anything like that, yeah. though, to be honest with you. Not at this stage. But, like, for Limerick, do you think that they kind of feel like we need to wash away what happened in 2019, the way we had a bit of a non-start, and a non-start in this game also, the way we had a bit of a non-start against Kilkenny, went 1-8-2 behind, we need to hit the ground running uh, this season, which is why Tip picked eight starters from the All-Ireland. Limerick would have had more, and then the guys that came off the bench were Hegarty, Will O'Donoghue, Sean Finn came on in the first half. So do you think for Limerick, they're just trying to set down a marker straight away and wash away what happened last year. Hundred percent, yeah. Like that's, so, the game mattered more to Limerick than Tip. Oh, hundred percent, yeah. That that's that that feeds into why that feeds into why I think it's um it's not that big of a deal for Tipperary. Were, were Tipperary eyeing this game? Not at all. Mm. Were Limerick eyeing this game? Somewhat. They mightn't have had all the personnel that they wanted um, playing, but I think and they were given some opportunities. But they were definitely eyeing this game more than uh, Tipperary. It's more. It was more of a necessity for Limerick to get a win. If Limerick had been beaten. And just say the you know beating in one of their next two games as well. It's just like you know what's going on in Limerick. There's a bit of a hangover mm. now. They're after coming from ten points down against the All Ireland champions, and they're in a lovely position for the rest of the league. Do you do you subscribe to this idea that Tipperary have a psychological issue with Limerick? That was discussed on the Sunday game, and it seemed to be the kind of consensus was that Tipperary do have an issue with Limerick now at this stage. I wouldn't subscribe to that to be honest with uh. you. The the, the Munster final was was the only game, and like that was. That, there, was diff, there were circumstances coming into that. They were obviously missing Cottle Barrett and they were, they were missing Bader Matter from the previous game, which they played them in either, either a week or two weeks previous. If they'd, if they'd met again last year, it would have been, it would have been a lot tighter. I just, think, I, I just think, I don't think it's a psychological thing, I just think Limerick are a bit better than Tip. That's, that's all. In I an think. overall sense? Yeah, I just think they're a bit better. That's all. And if you, let's, let's dismiss the group game from Munster last year when Tipperary beat Limerick because Limerick put out a bit of a shadow side. And Tipperary went uh, all guns blazing to win this game, ended up losing Barrett, ended up losing Bonner out of it. Tipperary were beaten badly in the Gaelic grounds in Munster the year before, absolutely pasted in the Munster final in the Gaelic grounds last year. I don't know if, if Liam Sheedy would have been happy to go in and, and lose this game, especially on a fade out too, because Limerick probably feel in their dressing room, we're actually the men of the scenario here. And when we put the it up men are here. Yeah, <laughs> and when we put it up to Tipperary, they're not able for, not able for it. I think that's a great position for Liam Sheedy to have for the rest of the season. I really do. Yeah, They're all Ireland champions and they have a big point to prove. Mm. I, that's the way I'd be looking at it, definitely. He's a stick, they're all Ireland champions and he's a stick to beat them with in January. Mm. Um, John Kiley was asked about the format of the league this year. Is it good or bad? And is the intensity gone? So like people know that there's two groups of six now and it goes into knockout stages. The, t the top seeds and the, or the top team in each side get to the semi-finals. Two and three playoff from the opposing groups. And quarter finals, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so Kylie was asked, and he goes, "I can tell you one thing: every team that goes out wants to win every match. That's a fact. When you put two teams out on the pitch and both want to win it, it is competitive. Okay. So teams are going to use an awful lot of their panel. Yes, they are because they want to develop players, use players. They have players that have injuries and Fitzgibbon is on. 
you want to use all of, all of those and and so it goes on but he's basically saying the bottom line is teams do want to win these games and when they're out on the field it is 100 percent. like how you pick your team is a different thing like you mightn't pick 100 percent of your team but whatever percent of it goes out is given everything i think the mindset of any elite athlete is that though once you take to the field you, you just can't you can't pull back at all plus there's a psychological thing of I would just say I'm playing midfield, I'm Keane Lynch, I'm marking, we'll just say Dan McCormick wasn't playing the other night, we'll just say I'm marking Dan McCormick. Yeah. I, I, I want to know that uh, when I was at giving my best, I had a little edge on him. I had a little edge on him. I'm carrying that into Munster, I'm carrying it into All Ireland if we ever meet again. Like, I don't think you, I don't think you ever look at it like that. Plus, it's, it's like you always, you're always trying to um, get an edge as a team, and as an individual player. So I, I, I would agree with him there, but the, for, the way the format has changed, uh, John Horne said that when the changes were made, the main thing was managers were saying, we don't want it to be as cutthroat because we want to give players a chance. This is what the league is for. So you're, blend, you're meshing that into the teams that, you know, play 10, 11 regulars and mix in lads here and there, like they'll get the most out of it I think, mm. because you're learning most about the new players. But they all, they all want to win. I don't think there's anyone, you know, waving a white flag or anything like that. Mm. Jake Morris getting three points, that's important for him. Like like pretty much the entire Tipperary forward line, very little impact was made in the last half an hour. But for him, after how the Munster final went last year, I think that that's big. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Um, for Limerick, I mean, you mentioned Willow Donoghue. Came on late in the first half, set up three goal chances, two of which were taken, then gets red carded for a second yellow for a rugby tackle which at the very end. Which you'd take all, every day of the week. Take all day. Like, i put him down as man of the match. In my, yeah, no, in I, was, I was just going to say to you, like, it's one of them rare situations where a sub coming on, not even after five or ten minutes, and gets man of the match. He basically did it all in a match. Mm. <laughs> basically. Yeah. And then gets the road at the end of it. I do wonder, like, and I, I said, we, we had this discussion last year about how Limerick played the exact same way every day. And is it going to become somewhat predictable? And if, let's say, Aaron Galan is out of contention for whatever reason, injury or whatever it might be, do teams have a fair idea what they're going to do? Like he's, he, The beauty of him is you can pop it in front of him, you can hit it high and he's a threat either way. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be mismatches against certain teams. But like Lim, because Limerick keep playing the exact same way, is there a worry from their point of view that again teams will be able to set up for them? Yeah, I'd be surprised if there's not a little more to their kind of arsenal this year. If there's not uh, even... Like Seamus Flanagan playing more inside, playing maybe getting more game time this year, offering a different kind of an outlet, maybe more of a long ball kind of an outlet. Or he can do a lot of the same things that Kalan can do as well. But I just expect the focus to change. I don't. This is the league as well. Remember, they're doing, they're doing, they did what everybody knows them for the mm -hmm. other day. Whether that's the exact same thing they do in the championship, I don't know. They obviously know it works pretty well against Tipperary though. So maybe they wouldn't be changing that too much if they were playing them again but you would be expecting you would be expecting something different from them at the end of the day uh, John Kiley said after 18 what we did in 18 won't win in 19 they did mm, something relatively similar yeah. it was good enough a lot, a lot of the way but it wasn't good enough at the end so what they did in 19 will not be good enough in 20 so you'd imagine you're going to see something different so if we, if we look at some of the other games in that side of the draw Watford against Cork a game I was at um, at Walsh Park and when when Cork went two goals to nil ahead after three minutes, Conor yeah. Lahan got a goal, I think it was the first score of the game, and then a little bit later, Shane Kingston, who was by a mile the pick of the forwards on the field, and absolutely for, um, from, the, from a Cork point of view, you thought, this is Watford all over again, this is another pace, and Liam Cahill's first game, it's going to go disastrously, and all the negativity that was there through the last year of Derek McGrath, throughout the year of Park Fanning, is going to come rolling again, and you're on a hiding to nothing here. Yeah, it looked like a disastrous situation. It was kind of the start of the... <sighs> we were all like this in the, 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 the press box. Yeah. And they had a massive crowd actually went down to see them and see kind of new manager and, and several new players as well. And you're just thinking, this is off to the worst possible start they could get off to. And you think, surely Cork will push on here and you know sense that bit of vulnerability in Waterford. And they weren't, well, I don't know whether it was, they weren't let push on or they weren't able to push on. And uh, Waterford just slowly got back. I think they were back level by the 14th minute or something like that. And um, I'd say a lot of it was probably to do with the confidence that they had in the work that they had done. By all accounts, I, I wouldn't say there's a county that has more done than them mm. this year. They have a serious volume of work done. And um, 
Yeah, Steve, we, Stephen Bennett even said that afterwards. Mm. It's a, like, you know, the way you talk uh, in uh, euphemisms, like, you know, we've a good bit of work done. You can kind of tell at times they're getting horsed out of it and probably, yeah. probably no harm too because they will probably need to feel it themselves that we've a lot of work done to get that confidence going out after, you know, like their eight championship games without a win. Yeah. Haven't won one in two and a half years. And their last time playing in Walsh Park was like, and I think he mentioned it was an embarrassment. Yeah. Walking off the pitch against Limerick, they scored 10, 10 points, points in their home venue. Beating, they were beating the guts of 20 points, I think. You know, it was, just, it was horrible. So it's a nice way for them to get back at it. And a lot of new faces, like I, I, I have to admit, I'd never, I hadn't heard of Ira Daly before yesterday. I hadn't, co- I hadn't come across him before yesterday. But his uncle, was a good minor. His uncle was centre back for Boris Lee in the yeah. '87 All Ireland. Any, any, any um, mention or possibility <laughs> yeah, of getting in a tip reference? Sure, his mother came up to me afterwards and introduced, you know, and, <laughs> and was all about it. So. Are you your man from our game? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like those young lads were very good. Connor Prunty. He moved on, like Conor Gleeson started off the game on Patrick Horgan and had a very rough time of it. I wonder is there a little bit of a hangover from last year against Tipperary, he started in the full back line, really tough time of it. And then this game in the full back line, isolated on Horgan, had a tough time. Horgan got a flick to set up um, that Kingston goal. That was early a beautiful off. flick as well. Yeah, yeah and I, th- I thought um, Gleeson was kind of a bit rash. You know the way sometimes when you're under pressure, or, and this wouldn't be in his case, but if you're not fully fit, you sometimes lunge in for balls that aren't there. Mm. I felt he was kind of lunging in for balls that weren't there. And he might actually benefit from playing a little further out the field for a while. Yeah. Not, not everyone is suited to the full back line. Remember when he was uh, doing a man marking job, was it against... Um, was it against Galway in the All-Ireland final or was it against Cork in the semi-final? He, he didn't play the final, he was suspended. Yeah, wasn't he? sorry. He definitely did a job in the semi-final. I yeah, think. was it on um, Horgan? Was, was, oh, that, maybe that was on Horgan because he got sent off for the flick on uh, him. I think it? it could have been because Noel Connors picked up Alan Cadigan back yeah. then, to the best of my knowledge. But now, he, uh, I rate him very highly, so now, I have I. to say. So he's just maybe gone off the boil a small bit, but um, I'd have full confidence that he, that he would come yeah. back. But I, I just wonder, would another position, might that stand him for a while? Now, Shane Fives came in and had a bit of trouble too but Conor Prunty moved over onto Patrick Horgan and gave a supreme display of spoiling like he's such a big guy he's very mobile actually got out in front for a few balls and in the air he was up sort of you know yourself when you're yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, playing yeah, the man yeah. but you're Maria yeah, going yeah, for it at yeah. the same time excellent Callum Lyons this lad looks like a savage player really really good so. he was good last year even now as well he was and mm. Prunty was very good last year as well they made Prunty vice captain as well didn't they no he's captain oh is he uh, no, Boris Matley Parik Matley's captain but oh sorry he, he is vice he, captain he was, he yeah, was yeah, missing yeah. Yeah. which is a big kind of statement because he only really came on the scene last year yeah. per se you know but um, yeah lots of new faces there um, I, chat, I was chatting to John Milan after the game and he's very impressed with Neil Montgomery as well the Things work that he did yeah. and things probably didn't fall for Daisy Hutchison but that's do you know what funnily enough I would look at it the same as Sheedy. I think he's better off having that day now. I think he's better off having that day, that tough day now, realising that it's not it's not as easy as it was at club level. Who, for Desi? Desi, yeah. Yeah, again, like I think it was one of the things that probably he should have done more for the club was turn, take his man on, go straight mm. and go. Because like the pace he has, like he said that he wasn't an absolute speed merchant when he was playing with Brighton in, yeah. in the Premier League. But when he came back to Ireland, he noticed that his speed was, you know, comparatively a lot mm. better than everyone else. I think he should be turning and going at his man because a lot of the time he gets the ball, he collects it, sort of solos out and up the flank and tries to feed it back out to somebody. Yeah, he's but used to he's used to having a man less than attack. I'd say a lot of the time mm. too, and it's usually two on three in there, and there's a spare man he's taking yeah. on. But it looks like it won't be the case with Walford this yeah. year as well. Just Kieran Benton as well was was, was brilliant. Like in fairness, Ridiculous. Um, I've kind of been following kind of. A from afar and I know we'd been mentioning it throughout the, the club run uh, he'd been putting up good scores from out the field and 8 and 9 points from midfield yeah. uh, Tomás McCarthy was explaining that to me yeah. and um, like he was brilliant yesterday mm. in fairness remember he got, he got that goal in the 17 final from wing back the one that went the whole oh, way oh yeah that skittered past yeah, Colin yeah. Cannon but um, he's got, he's got, he seems to have a bit of previous in that regard and that's the sort of player they need they need someone that's mm. going to chip in with 3 or 4 from out there and the, I, I think the most pleasing thing is you know who was in the stand Austin Gleeson Parik Matney Jamie Barron Kevin Moore tied the Borka long term but he'd be back for the, for the championship and I think that's probably the most pleasing thing of, the, of, it, of it all and these guys know that the lads that are there are doing a fair job as well they must have a serious amount of work done because they were hopping off the ground in fairness I wonder about Patrick Curran like he scored 1-3 yesterday and he was known as a, an underage prodigy Do you, like it never happened under Derek McGrath for him not not to the level that we would have expected. 
Do you feel that that was a symptom of the way that they were playing, obviously dropping guys out the field, having Brick in the attack, so that's basically a converted player moving up to the forwards. I think to some degree Austin Gleeson was taken out of the backs and moving into the forwards because they needed his dynamism up there. And players like him, maybe Brian O'Halloran, Jake Dillon, who was uh, named number nine yesterday, that players like that suffered because of the way they set up the team. Well, they're playing a different type of a game completely. He's used to playing the full forward line, shall we say, and there's two in there and maybe one of your other forwards is out, but there's six in the yeah. forward line. And he instead, he was mar- there was three defenders and two forwards. Shane and, Bennett would have had yeah, the same thing. Yeah, and really, the really tankless job. Like, You'd really, you'd really want to love what you're doing to be doing that job because mm. it's not an easy one. And um, now it looks like it's going to be different. He's going to be one-on-one with a defender. Mm. But I have to say, just on the, on the Cork side of things, uh, Patrick Curran scored two points yesterday where he was standing up, actually standing up to strike it, which you rarely see at Intercounty County level. Steve ben, Stephen Bennett scored one, and I only saw the highlights, so there could have been more. Um, the lack of pressure been put on by, by, by Cork, and the, just, the lack of aggression in general, it's, I, 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 Kieran Kingston must be scratching his head this morning a small bit. I know it's only January, but he, wa- he watched them for the last two years and he must have been thinking, geez, I'd love to do this, this and this if I came back. I'd love to get them more aggressive. I'd love to get them more consistent. I'd love to get them, and there was whatever. And there was so many things missing yesterday. Yeah, but you look at that team and you look at the spine. Robert Downey actually did well yesterday because at times Waterford's delivery in wasn't great. A lot of their scores were coming from a bit further out. And they hung up a few balls. He's a big man. He did well. But the, the three and six is Robert Downey and Tim O'Mahony. who are very unproven at this stage. I'm not sure if centre-back is the place for Tim O'Mahony. I think sometimes when he's, like, there might be a ball in a shemozzle and he tries to stand over it and roll lift from a very, uh, you know, kind of vertical yeah. soft position. And you're never going to get away with that. Uh, Chris O'Leary, we've seen him with UCC doing some great things. Quietish game. Damien Cahillan scored three from play from wing back, which is, I think, the only pl- player to outscore him on the team. With Shane Kingston with two mm. two, which was kind of amazing, but like I think you've got a defense there that there's no one going to frighten the life out of you there in that defense. Like they're all good players and they all have potential, but as things stand right now, and that's no slight on anyone who I actually have name checked there, but they just don't strike any fear into you. No, and I would have said that one of the most important things Kieran Kingston to do was nail down three and six. Mm. And without being smart, he's, he's put two relative rookies in there. Robert Downey only made his championship debut last year against against Limerick. He's only 20, I'd say. Yeah. Tim O'Matney, I don't know, Tim omatney has been jumped around everywhere. Yeah. He's been playing County Hurling for about two or three years. He's played full forward, he's played wing forward, he's played centre forward, he's played midfield, he's played wing back, he's played centre back. Yeah. Does he need to decide on some sort of position for him? I personally don't think six is it because I think six is too pivotal. I think you're better with someone a bit more experienced. Would you put Bill back. Cooper there? I, I was just looking at the team here. I just think you know exactly what you're going to get from yeah. him. And without being smart, when someone runs down the middle of the defence, you have to have that thing in your head as a forward, I'm going to get killed. <laughs> you have to have that thing in your head, I'm going to get absolutely upended. It's here. funny you mentioned that. There was an incident at one stage during the first half when Jack Fagan, who who did well on his debut for our league debut, Me, say, for, yeah, yeah, did well for Watford from centre forward, scored a point and a, and a lovely sideline. Um, himself and Cooper were having a, a shim- you know, they were rolling yeah. around in the dirt uh, over at the sideline. Play went on for about thirty seconds, and I was there watching the game, and you're you're trying to look at the two things because Cork <laughs> were about to score, but you wanted to see who was thumping yeah, who. Yeah, yeah. And then play continued on, and play was let go, and eventually there was a free at the other end, maybe thirty seconds mm. later while this continued <laughs> and eventually two yellow cards and on they go what about Cork then do they have the bottle for it like do they have the bottle for a game like that and do you know what do you know what stood out tr- during the game at times they're hurling let them down like their delivery from the back line at times was scandalous little dribbly balls in at lads feet when they're trying to come out full pace and yeah. you know in, in the turf at this time of the year and they tried a lot of cross field diagonals which I have no issue with that because it did cause problems and then they'd try and win that ball and hit a stick pass through the middle for someone coming through. They tried that a lot. It's, it's going to be hard to make that stick in yeah, January. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, that Limerick might, saw that as well, even the other yeah. night, like in the first and half. It might work brilliantly during the summer, but there's definitely a couple of players there that looked uh, like fish out of water. I think Aidan Walsh at times last year, I remember watching him against Kilkenny in the league early on in the year, and I thought right full forward is a spot for him. The ball is sticking to his hand. He looks like he has scores in him. Mm-hmm. Now, just like this game they absolutely folded up the tent midway through that game and lost to Kilkenny but I just wonder are there a couple of guys out of position there is Dara Fitzgibbon the answer at centre forward 
I could actually see wing forward being a role so that he can get himself quite deep. Um, carry ball and yeah, carry yeah, pass, yeah. pass tacklers and things like that. I just think, the big thing, I just think they're too nice. Mm. I just think they're too nice. There's loads of lovely hurlers there and, and you'd say... God, there's nothing worse than being a lovely hurler. There you go. I, and everyone knows what it means. Because there's, there's, there's no lovely hurling in Crow Park. Do you there's think no they lovely, could... lovely hurling doesn't win all Ireland. Yeah. Do you still think, would you rule them out of the All-Ireland pecking or, or the All-Ireland uh, No, I, I, I wouldn't. I'd have, to, I'd have to see by the end of the league whether they have three and six nailed down yeah. and whether there's a bit more bite in them, you know. They'd probably, like Owen Cadigan is probably going to be full back again. Like, you know, so he, at least he, he's, he brings a bit of solidity there as well. But you need to see... Colm Splann is yeah, in there, he'd kill you. Can I just say, he, he's their most important player. Yeah. He's their most important player by a mile. And he was a glaring absentee last year without him. Yeah. Because, number one, he, um, he usually ties down one of the opposition's best forwards. Number two, he's, like, he's filthy. And I mean that in the best way possible. Yeah. The, he's not too nice. That's the biggest compliment of them yeah. all. Um, and he's unbelievably aggressive as well. Like you not you know you're not gonna get anything handy when the ball goes in around there. Mm. Do you know? And they need him. To be fair to Kieran Kingston, he played a bit of preseason and he said he wants to ease him back, which is smart because playing him the other day and him picking up a knock is no use to them. So a championship is when they want him back. But to me, I, yeah, you can have all your forwards in the world and they, they will put up scores to win games, but they will also concede them. To me, he's the most important player. At least Kieran Kingston could go in home with his young lad and be happy with how Shane did. Because 2-2. Two, two. Well, at least you were good. <laughs> yeah, he's like, just about a few more like him now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, he was absolutely brilliant and looked a threat from the get-go. 2-2. Two, two. Possibly could add more. Won a few frees. Flying it from the fifth given as well, you know. Yeah. He, was, he, was, he, was, he was going very well this time last year as well. He's sort of lad who goes at you. Yeah. Uh, every time he's going to want to take a, take a go at you. As much as you're going to build things around Horgan, who was kept scoreless in this game, you want to get Shane Kingston on the ball. Now then the great anomaly that is Conor Lahan. We know he's got probably the talent to match pretty much anyone in the country. Ah, he's seriously talented. Scored yeah. a goal after a minute and uh, didn't really get involved at all after that. What is it about... Conor Lahan that he can have all that talent and yet we don't consistently see it I don't know they found a role for him uh, John Myler found a role for him in 18 where he was centre forward slash wing forward and a lot of the puck outs were uh, landing in space in yeah. his path and he was coming on to that type of ball um, I, just, I would have said it about Patrick Horgan up until a couple of years ago I just don't think he wins enough of his own ball mm. um, and it just seems to be too easy to take him out of a game like he should have been in the game yesterday. He got a goal early. You're thinking, yeah, he should be. He hit one three or one four today, and he didn't really get a puck out thereafter. This is his tenth season. Yeah, you know he's he's 27. He'll be 28 in the summer. For Cork to win in All Ireland, he'll have to be flying, like Patrick Horgan will have to be flying Shane Kingston, and you just can't count on enough of those Cork players, can you? No. When you put down and you you look at it, you see Harnady, Horgan, Lahan, Kingston, uh, Dara Fitzgibbon. Who had some probably forget Alan Cadigan. Mm. Like there's five or six of, you know, as good of an attacker as you want in the country. Um, mm. they just need they just need um just need a few more lads, I don't know, that are just kinda of willing to suppose maybe they just need three or four lads maybe to do some of the harder work for them, maybe. I don't mm. know. Um Westmead um lost heavily enough to go away, and I don't think that's a massive surprise. So one twenty four to seventeen or sorry to ten points, so seventeen points in it. Angus Clark getting sent off in the first half probably do you know that 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 ensured the inevitable anyway i thought he was he was unlucky to get that second yellow card he went up for a high ball came down and clipped uh, canning on the head so joe, tried, joe tried to keep him on yeah like <laughs> yeah, so yeah, in fairness. it was but a real like, sporting weekend between that and dean rock going over to david clifford fair enough why do people make such a big deal out of that like all right he said well done i mean that happens in every game all the time and people just fawn pure and utter class all right lads get over it classy said, well gesture it's a lovely online, oh, online this headline. is class i'm so <laughs> sick of this nonsense but anyway back to angus clark i think he went for the ball and sometimes you let the hurley go and you clip something that you don't mean to so it was a yellow card he had to go for a second yellow but i think everyone knows he was unlucky too yeah the first one i don't think he should have got a yellow the first time around okay the first yellow he was actually flicking in his hurl on the near side he wasn't going across the man's yeah. body or anything like that i don't think it was in any way dangerous and i don't think he should have got a yellow for the first one i was uh, we were training yesterday morning and i was covering the game so i did so i only got in for the second half but uh, it was just a total non-event. Yeah. Total, total anyone, non-event. Anyone stand out? 
Um, Tyg Harren had the weirdest game of all time. Six from play. For, was, but did he play midfield? Yeah, I'd say he was on the ball eight times. <laughs> I'd say he touched the ball eight times. Mm, seven, eight times, and yeah. he got six points. Yeah. Anyone else stand out for you at all? Like Joe Cannon got um, 12 points, two from play. Yeah, didn't see enough of some of the other newcomers. Ana Murphy had very, very little to do. Darren Morrissey, who we've seen a bit la- of last year, was, was okay. TJ Brendan wasn't bad, uh, left handed corner back. Um, apart from that, not, not really, no. Parik Manning got in a lot of balls. They had a sweeper. They had a sweeper once, um, once Angus Stark went off. They were always, they were always kind of in control. Uh, Tommy Doyle did a good job at the far end, considering the amount of ball that was raining in. Um, Killian Doyle, who'd be one of their, one of their better players, went off um, early in the second half, which was yeah. strange. He'd been injured coming into the game, so I don't know when they maybe when they realised that Clark was gone off and they had no chance of winning the game, they were like, "This lad is not fit for seventy minutes, so we'll, we'll save him and think of the next day." Yeah. The next day, they, I think they're playing Waterford the next day. As far as I can, as far as I can remember, because I remember in my head thinking that would be the game they're targeting. Whereas now, well, offered are coming in with a win, and cock a hoop, and Westmead are coming in not in not in great shape. And Westmead scored a grand total of two points from playing the whole game. Yeah. So that's a bit of a, a worry for Shane O'Brien, the manager, who's a, a cool and native actually. Um, to so seems to be, if it's not a Stapleton from Boris Ali or someone from Kula, see that's when you spread yourself around. We got an issue here. One in Munster, <laughs> one in one in Dublin. You're about to be related. I'm trying to, to insert country. myself into the story <laughs> somehow. Right, we'll go into the um, the other side of it. So Clare, one twenty seven, Carlo fourteen points. Yeah, just Carlo are missing a lot of players at the moment. Clare probably want to hit the ground running under Brian Lowen, so they're probably going full guns for this. Yeah, um, I can't, can't really, you have to kind of save judgment really f- for, for another day. Tony Kelly was on the freeze. Interesting that um, Nia DC, who would be, would be uh, you know, and Nia DC takes the freeze generally for Ballet. Yeah, his club mate. Yeah. yeah, and Tony Kelly's taking him for the county. It's funny, like, we had that case as well. Liam Langton was taking freeze for Offaly the other day, and a lot of the time he doesn't take them for Claudia Gales. I noticed that John Conlon took a free. Go away. I, could, I couldn't even imagine him do it. Yeah. Yeah, like he's obviously a brilliant scorer from play, but I couldn't see him do it. Um, but obviously he did. David Reedy was on the field. Remember, he took the freeze a couple of years ago. That's right, yeah. That's yeah, right, so yeah. he wasn't put at him. Shane O'Donnell scored one too. I mean, again, if Shane O'Donnell gets enough ball, a bit like, you know the way, I think Shane O'Donnell does what Desi Hutchinson needs to do. 100%. Turn and go at your man. Every I, time. I think Desi Hutchinson could be just as devastating if he, if he got to that. David Fitzgerald centre forward is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, he's kind of moved around between wing he's back. He's some athlete. Like. Yeah, he's a fair athlete. He's moved around between wing back, wing forward, midfield. And he's kind of been, a lot of his best hurling has been off the bench, funnily enough. When yeah. he started the games, he has been not as effective as coming on. I wonder though, is, and having not seen the game, it's hard to comment, but like, some, sometimes his best work is done when he comes onto the ball a bit like Darif yeah. given and he goes at a team whereas if you get the ball at centre forward even if you're dropping deep a lot of the time you'll come and get the ball back to goal and then you've got to turn and get up ahead of steam so it's, it's a different ball game altogether someone his size sometimes those players need a couple of steps to get up to full speed which is why coming on the, on the burst off the shoulder of someone makes you so devastating yeah and as well as that he, playing centre forward I've played there you've probably played there a bit did I have? It, it's all grand um, when you're on the ball and the ball is going through you Yeah. but in a tight game the ball is just raining down on top of you and mm. you have to win it and, it's and you're to- surrounded from yeah. all sides and it's, all a times. Totally, it's a totally different game where primary ball is the most important thing so that's probably what he's going to have uh, that's probably going to be the hardest part of his game mm. if that's where he's going to stay uh, Kilkenny 321 Dublin 18 points and Kilkenny had 14 men for um, a bit of the first half and all of the second half. I think that's a very worrying result for Dublin. Now, Matty Kenny was interviewed afterwards and he did explain the amount of players that are away with the Fitzgibbon Cup at the moment. And, and that's a consideration for plenty of teams at the moment. Like Tipperary had a couple of lads on Saturday night who had played on Thursday. Mm. So it's, it's an issue there too. But Jesus. the manner of it, yeah. not good. If he's saying about how many he's missing, Brian Cody could have listed off a fair whack that he's missing. Because it was a we- it was a fairly experimental Kilkenny team. I won't say a weekend team, but it was definitely very experimental. Well, it definitely was. Yeah, it's it's very worrying for Dublin. Um, just saw some of the clips last night and was chatting to a few people that were at the game as well. Like they never really raised the gallop at all. No. With fifteen against fourteen for the gu- for the guts of you know forty five mm-hmm. minutes. So um, it's not a great start for them. Um, I was chatting to someone about it, and they were kind of saying that. 
that maybe Matty learned something from last year's league in the sense that he thought maybe that they got a bit flatter as the year went Put on. Put too much into it. Possibly, yeah. Um, it's on the counter-argument, I should say, they weren't too flat when they played Galway at the last night in the Leinster round robin. They're obviously flat today they played against Leash, and that there will be more of an emphasis on championship and less less on the <coughs> league and they would be a bit of a slow burn and they'd start seeing their best there at the end of the league mm. but they had a strong enough team out do you they, know? they did no they were definitely still missing players you know the likes of Liam Rush and that um, I'd definitely be I'm definitely concerned about it because I, I know Matty Kenny likes to win every game he'd like to win a game of hopscotch if, if he went mm. into it um, that, that's worrying I'd say Alan Nolan's puck outs and being blocked by Billy Ryan after catching an Owen Murphy free there at one stage was poor like that you can't there's one place you can't afford to have bad distribution that's Nolan Park because the crowd really gets oh, on top yeah, of you like sense. we've seen that year after year after year um, like if you were going to have a bad puck out I'd nearly rather you hit it as far as you can out 100%, the side line, yeah. rather than short 100 yards up the field yeah, yeah. And, and drive it over the sideline yeah, who cares yeah, yeah. but like I just think you can't have this and I mean some people think that sounds stupid obviously primarily you want to win your puck outs but if you're struggling I'd rather hit it over the sideline yeah and there was two out over the sideline you know 25 yards in mm. and then you just feel like the whole world is caving in and everyone's like this is just turned into a disaster like, yeah. you know um, and yeah just it was a real non-event very surprising to be honest with you mm. I thought Dublin would give the league a, a right burst That's, they are missing lads fair enough but like you know can Kenny are missing three or four of starting team three or four they're starting forwards and the best hurler in the country at the moment like. Eamon Dillon I thought did quite well in the forward line a lot of the other guys I, th- I think Mark Judah will expect more out of himself um, I, I think Oshin O'Rourke got a couple from play he'd want more Danny Sutcliffe picked as captain uh, scored a point I'd like to see him bring his teammates into it a little bit more I think mm. at times the long solo runs you, you, it doesn't matter who you are and how fast you are you're going to run into traffic going down the centre of Kilkenny yeah yeah you have a fair idea of what he's going to do when he gets the ball. He's going to want to take you on. He's going to want to try and either take you on and probably score himself or shoot from 80 or 90 yards. Yeah. So he does probably need to bring more lads into the game. Interesting, I'm not sure why Sean Moore didn't start. I, seen... w- I see. I, he's only back from Australia maybe a week okay. and a half. Like He was away for, for a good while. So the I bits I saw, him... he was fairly sharp. He was fairly yeah. sharp when he came back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about the red card for Richie Lai? Like For me... When when Brendan Maher did that shoulder that he got a yellow card for against Ballyhale, I had the world and its mother onto me on Twitter saying, mm. "Oh, you were able to say Richie Hogan got a, deserved a red card in the All Ireland final. What about Brendan here?" And my answer was, "Well, he hit him shoulder to shoulder, and I haven't seen any footage that shows shoulder hit head. And until I do, like there was very conclusive footage yeah. of, of um, Hogan's arm going across Carl Barrett's head that time. And in this situation, I think Lahey." came in you know we all do it where you try and get in over a ball mm. but he came in and he caught um i can't remember who it was um it was a, a left hander whoever it was yeah he totally and rushed in yeah. yeah he absolutely burst him and he he had to go as far as i was concerned and so it look it looks like there's an edict going down that anything head high or anything like that there's just zero tolerance on it yeah that's what it looks like anyway. and what disappointed me a little bit later on then was like paddy deegan was looking for for a red card for very little I think he got tackled and someone's kind of was like that and his head was low and it was like hit into him like that mm. and he was he was remonstrating big time with the referee. I, th- I thought there was no need for that. But by the way, this was a horrific game to watch. It was so scrappy. Like the first 10 minutes, like I got back to the house and um, my friend said, it's, it was just, it's, it's a poor game. It's terrible. And I thought, it can't actually be all that bad. So I turned it on and after 10 minutes I was pulling my hair out mm. because it was horrific to watch. Not a good sign for for Dublin. Need to need to respond and quickly. Good sign for good sign for Kilkenny in fairness. Yeah, um, they're they're developing the squad. There's more and more lads getting their opportunities and you know, even. But just back to Richie Latty, there'd be a big to be a black mark beside his name now for a while with Cody because he does not he do, doesn't like the Jerry Edward hardly played a minute. Don't know if he played a minute at championship after he got sent off last year against Galway. He was dangerous now. He got he yeah. got um, he got a goal. Billy Ryan got two goals. And I thought it was very strange the way um, Paddy Smith tried to stop that second goal driven into the net. He went after it with his foot even yeah, though the yeah, no, it was head. strange. Yeah. But sometimes it is only your, like when you do it yourself and you know the dynamic of what way your body's moving that you know why I, I can't quite get my hurley to it but it just looked odd mm, yeah. I thought that was a bit strange interesting to see the Kilkenny halfbacks which we've talked about before 
uh, bombing forward a good bit more. Yeah, they were they were far more prominent going forward when Kilkenny had the ball, and it's it's an interesting one. Wexford did a lot of that last year. I looked back at the the other semi final against Tipperary and the backs were Sean Murphy. Yeah, Sean Murphy. Murphy um, Liam Ryan. Uh, Liam Ryan got that point. Uh, Simon Donahue was striding forward. Kevin Foley was pushing forward a sweeper to get a score. So it'd be interesting to see. Like you've talked about it before about Kilkenny having really good strikers at five and seven when they play the likes of Limerick they can punish them if the ball comes back near them from 100 yards yeah if the wing backs yeah. or wing forwards drop back for the opposition so it'll be interesting to see if that's maybe a small little change like, <laughs> you never would have seen uh, Paddy Deegan going past midfield before under any Brian Cody like Jackie Terrell said last night that if JJ had went past 65 he would have had an earache like listen <laughs> to him tell him to come back like and so it's interesting to see maybe that's something different we'll see from this year and DJ Carey in his selectors much like Kieran Kingston he'll be, he'll be happy with the young lad getting a point for bringing back yeah Carey. definitely yeah. yeah interesting to see the two Tuller own boys coming on as well obviously only won the, the All-Ireland um eight days before yeah. that and I believe they were all in Goran Park I was down there for the test days last Thursday and I think they were there on a bit of a hoolie now I don't know whether if Tommy Walsh uh, Village as they call him yeah. and Martin Keown were there <laughs> were, were there but um, yeah th that's obviously it's funny when you're a fringe player like that whether, I don't know whether it was a case of they want to get back in quickly or Cody wants them back in yeah. do you know what I, mean? I don't know which that is but it's there's probably an unspoken word where you know yeah. when you get back in or you might even get a text or come back in when you can who knows what way it goes yeah. which are probably like just I better get back in and there. then the other two are on boys are thinking oh, these boys are after hanging us out to dry here we look terrible yeah. by the fact that they're not back in <laughs> you know? um, so that's like Dublin have leash next week they'll want to hit the ground running there I, I think this is a situation you talk about Tipperary the result didn't matter too much to them I think for Cork that um, that result kind of I think it was important to them the way yeah. that they lost or it, it says something Waterford important to get a win I think for Dublin that sort of a performance based on what happened last year against Leash I think that was big so there was a bit of pressure going on there against definitely Leash, is yeah so Wexford beat Leash 227 to 216 and uh, <laughs> Ender Rowland scoring a goal from the goals from 100 yards yeah I didn't I didn't see it no I didn't, no, I didn't no, see, I didn't it, see yeah, it no unfortunately not might be a clip of it going around somewhere, but uh, they were tight with them most of the way. Mm. To be fair, it was two, two ten to eight um, at half time. And I know Leash are, Leash are down a good few bodies. Forget about like who's not around at the moment. Yeah, there's they're only seven of the players yeah. that lost the tip. You know, like they're missing a lot of bodies, so they'll be happy enough with that. They're and probably Wexford going to Dublin in a good position. And Wexford went with twelve of their team from the All Ireland semi final last That's year. That's right. Yeah. So you're talking about Leash at fifty percent versus Wexford at eighty percent. We'll say. Give yeah, yeah. It's it's. It's promising for Eddie Brennan, but like this is one of the games that I've targeted probably now the, the Dublin game. They're still down a good few bodies. Yeah. I'd be I'd be surprised if it didn't come out with a result. But situations are suiting them now. They're coming in in a decent position now. Dublin coming in in a, an awful position really. Mm. Ten scorers for Wexford. Uh, Jack O'Connor took the freeze. Six points uh, from freeze. I thought that was interesting. Paddy Foley knocked over three. Connor McDonald with one three, kind of continuing on the form from last year. Um, yeah, like. A lot of those main guys, like the fact that Conor McDonald is there, Paul Morris, Rory O'Connor, all scoring, Liam Moog McGovern as well. Like, and we've talked about him before, how good he was last yeah. year. Not to get an All Star nomination was, was I, frankly mad. I thought, but um, I have a thing about um, left sided free takers. I don't like them because they're sort of hitting across themselves. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. I just don't think it's reliable. I've there's rarely Paul Codd aside. I haven't seen too many left sided free takers that that I really trust. It's actually was watching the. The second half of the Westmead game against Galway yesterday, and I think it was Derek Clinton took a free on his left side, and I just said to him, "I'm side," and I said, I "Don't like this, don't like this." He'd scraped inside the post, and I never said that for the next free. It was in front of the goal, and I think he missed it. I just don't like, I just don't like it for whatever reason. I just don't like it. Well, let us know if the, if you actually disagree with with Vernie on that one, and give us examples of unbelievably consistent free takers off their left hand side. Okay, well, like we're talking about a right hand side uh, player hitting it across his left. Yeah. Well, what about the other way around? If so, by that kind of um, me measuring up that way, Patrick Horgan hitting on his open side on his on his right, so a left hander you'd want hitting that way, yeah. Yeah. What about Joe Dean? He hit across himself, unbelievably oh, accurate. Love that. It worked perfect uh, for him. And it was it's the same thing. It was within his was it was usually inside a range, wasn't it? It was yeah. usually inside. It was usually between the posts. Yeah, and it was usually. Be yeah, inside the 65. Did he even take their 65s? Uh, did Ben O'Connor take them? 
Ben would have been young now. Someone and, who's correct us. Yeah, but I don't think he took their 65s. I could be wrong on that. Because his style was kind of... It was usually 55 yards in, I would have mm. said. But I'm, I'm definitely open to correction on that. Yeah, one. give us some examples there. Um, so we'll look through a couple of the results from 2A. Antrim, 20 points. Wicklow, 11. So that's comfortable enough win there. Kerry, 224. Mayo, 13. So really laying down a marker there. And we want to talk about your own county. Offaly, 26 points. Mead, 121. Um... A win for Michael Fenley, but are you concerned that it's by two points, or are you just happy that it's a win? Uh, no, I would be concerned, yeah. They played in the Keogh Cup, it was 8-18 to 3-18, I think. Um, the key thing was what they were conceding to me, it wasn't the goals that they were getting. Yeah. 3-18 is a lot to be conceding. And there was a big crowd down in Borough yesterday, um, there was about 1,400 people there. I couldn't be there, obviously, myself, because I was working. But by all accounts, they were hanging on. They were 18-10 up at half time. And they were hanging on at the end. Yeah. Um, I can't think. I can't think of the name of the fella. But I was just chatting to someone this morning, and they said Mead, Mead brought in someone in the second half, and he just called. He caused wreck. Big, uh, big strong fella, and had a good goal chance at the end, and just end up getting hooked. And you know, if if we'd been beaten, it would have been an absolute disaster. Mm. And they go to Kerry next weekend. Uh, Shane Conway is busy with UCC at the moment, but I'd imagine he'd still be playing. He was good yesterday um, when they beat Mayo. Jordan Conway is very dangerous as well, real nippy forward inside. Caused a lot of trouble when they played awfully in the Joe McDonough last year. So, like, that that will have a huge bearing yeah. on who goes up or not. We're, awfully are far from um, certainties to go up and far from certainties to get to the final even. If they're beaten next weekend, they're in a bit of trouble. If they'd lost yesterday, they would have, they'd have to beat both uh, Antrim and Kerry. And Antrim are not a bad side at all. Yeah. And I remember chatting Michael Fenley after they beat Antrim, or awfully beat Antrim in the Kyo Cup. He said that's the most physical side you would come up against nearly all year. Antrim, were t- it was tight against Wicklow. Um, I think it was nearly level at half time or they were up a point. But um, Neil McManus's class kind of showed. They were missing actually Keelan Malai, who was brilliant against Offaly in the Kyo Cup final. And they still won by, won by eight or nine. Do you know? And uh, I think Wicklow had some free taking problems yesterday as well. But... Uh, yeah, two A is going to be tight. Offaly will win the Christie Ring, but I could not guarantee that it's going to be promoted. The difference in that is, you know, you're throwing your Kerry's into it, you're throwing your Antrims into it, and you're throwing, yeah, basically those two, basically. Yeah. Um, a quick uh, one about Louth, actually. They, so they lost by five points at home to Tyrone yesterday, but there was a tweet put out by the Loud GA. Interesting Loud hurling fact. For seven, yes, seven consecutive decades, a Callan has lined out for the Wee County Hurlers. Shane Callan at number 11. Isn't that amazing? That's savage, yeah. Seven decades. Fairness. And I think um, Loud were like, I think I think that game was like the tip game. Loud were up nine or ten points at half time. I think it was 13 points to four at half time. And I don't know whether there was a gale or something blown, but definitely anyone that was at that game, you might let us know. Tyrone ended up winning by five, so mm. I don't know. Another we, because we do a pools competition in my own club where you have to pick all the winners of all the games the weekend. So there's as much interest genuinely in Division 3B and 3A now because people are like researching, is such and such playing? Is your man with them this year? Because they're trying to pick up points down it. Longford absolutely killed a lot of people this week and Armagh killed them as well. Ar- Armagh beat Donegal away and Longford beat someone away and neither were fancy to do so. So, yeah. And you see uh, a tweet from Ronan Fagan. Derek McGrath's first session with Fate Harriers, Saturday at 8 a.m. 35 players there, but 300 spectators. That's there. unreal, isn't it? <laughs> no, imagine, That's actually unbelievable. Like. So they said, uh, imagine what it's going to be like on Championship Day, and obviously you'll have Lee Chin in the team as well. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. That's um, yeah. If, if 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 the only thing he does is like bring a bit of a buzz around the club, um, he definitely seems to have done that already. Yeah, they're doing great shape. If there's any story we missed from the weekend, uh, let us know. That's about the height of it really, That's isn't it? That's about yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching our game. Don't forget to like and share the videos. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe.